you do another set and that set one rep you're one rep away from tearing your whole body apart Now let's get into some of the training techniques that I wanted to run past you guys prior to getting into the health supplementation. Do some mobility work, guys. I know it's annoying. I do minimal mobility work only on the body parts that I feel are a little bit compromised. So when I feel a little bit of a pain in my knees, right, or in my hips or in my elbows, I do some specific mobility work for those body parts. Loosen up the area before I get into my main workout and make sure that it's all properly warmed up, stretched out a little bit, feels uh, subtle and pliable, and that I can have a workout pain-free. So you do a little bit of mobility work, you warm up the particular body part that you're going to train, and you do that every time you go to the gym. And if you really have some sore uh, connective tissue, right, you might have to do some additional mobility work at home, or look into um, therapy, like deep tissue massage therapy, or Graston therapy, or active release therapy. And it, it, all these uh, therapy methods are extremely painful. But trust me, I've been doing deep tissue massage therapy twice a week when I was at my all time strongest, just to prevent scar tissue buildup, uh, break up adhesions, keep everything nice and uh, pliable and stretchy, right? I don't, want, I don't want to be bound up when I'm doing heavy workout. I want everything to move as it should be moving. And Keep in mind that as you're gaining muscle mass, you're changing your anatomy. Because but let's take the bicep, for example. Let's say you have a normal bicep and the tendon and the muscle is just going straight, right? It, and then it's attaching to the lower uh, arm. As your bicep grows, this tendon will go up. So this is straight now. The bicep is pushing the tendon up and this is straight. And as your bicep grows and grows and grows, this is straight. So you need to do some mobility work. To make sure that when you do this and you have bulging biceps that when your tendon is sloping down a little bit it doesn't get into a compromised position because you've been actively working your way through the scar tissue the adhesions and providing the building blocks to keep yourself uh, the tendons uh, very healthy and in a low inflammatory state so do some deep tissue massage therapy. If that's too painful, just do a typical uh, sports massage or Swedish massage to loosen up the areas where the adhesions are. And then you progress into deep tissue massage therapy to break up as much of the adhesion scar tissue and uh, right, tight areas uh, as possible. Now, that will work up until a certain point, especially when you're on uh, performance enhancing drugs, a decent dose. Right, which makes your muscles a little bit tighter, especially the winstrols or the, the masterons or just the heavy cycle in general will make your muscles a little bit tighter. So as you progress through deep tissue massage therapy, particular areas might not be 100% yet and then you need to look into active release therapy or Graston therapy, which uses tools and then scrapes, um, yeah, very painful, scrapes particular areas of the body open <laughs> And allows for better blood flow and allows you to actually recover and take some of the metabolic waste products away. So all these things you can look into, do some mobility work, do some deep tissue massage therapy or anything else that falls into that category to keep the muscles oxygenated, to keep the muscles uh, flowing with nutrients, to take care of the metabolic waste products, take care of adhesions, scar tissue, right, including the scar tissue from injections, whether those are site injections or uh, conventional depot injections in the regular injection sites. I mean, it took me maybe 15 sessions to remove the scar tissue in my upper glutes after 10 years of um, right using the upper glutes as an injection depot um, because that's the last place where anybody would see it. And right when the pants come off, it's usually too late. And well, my wife is already locked in. So if there's a little bit of scar tissue in my upper glutes, my wife would be okay with that. And you should also incorporate some sort of stretch under load exercise every workout. Every workout. So you do your mobility work to warm up. Then you maybe have a compound movement, right? To track your progress, to follow progressive overload. Get your uh, strength goals in and your rep goals. Maybe do a back offset afterwards with also a particular weight and particular reps that you aim towards. And then somewhere later in the workout when you have an awesome pump and everything is nicely lubricated and uh, full with blood, 
and perhaps a little bit of water, depending on which performance enhancing drug you're running uh, or none. Either way, incorporate a stretch exercise so you can stretch a particular body part under load. For chest, that will be chest flies. And not these chest flies where your, um, your elbows don't even break parallel. You need to do chest flies to the point you feel a stretch in your chest. And maybe hold that stretch for a second or two. And then go up from that position, right? So you're actively trying to open up that muscle under load. It's something that I learned from DC ta training, dog crab training, uh, designed by Dante Trudel. He would always incorporate a stretch after training a particular uh, body part. And you would do multiple body parts grouped within the same workout within DC training. So you would do a, a chest, for example, follow that with a 90 second fly uh, where you stretch the chest under load, maybe using 15 pound dumbbells or 20 pound dumbbells. Now, for me, what I've found to work better for myself is if I were to do a similar stretch, a little bit heavier weight, and then do this chest exercise, this fly, um, for hypertrophy as well. So I aim towards getting an awesome stretch with a weight that I can control, not too heavy to the point you tear your uh, chest off, right? That's what we're trying to avoid. A weight heavy enough to get a very good stretch, but not too heavy that you're risking injury. So I would do flies, chest flies with maybe 25 kilos, which is what, 55 pounds, 60 pounds maybe. Hold the stretch, really work through that, open up the, the, the muscle a little bit that way, and then do that repetitively for six, nine, 12 reps, right? You can do this with every body part. You can do this with quads, doing sissy squats. You can do this with hamstrings, doing stiff legged deadlifts. You can do this with calves, doing donkey calf raises. You can do this with back, with uh, uh, pull downs or pull ups. I found that pull ups are a little bit better to stretch under load, um, unless you're very, very light, but I usually hover around 90, 100, maybe even a little bit heavier. So incorporate some sort of exercise where you can stretch that particular body part. And that allows you to have a little bit of an adaptive process that you're strong in a partially compromised position, right? Because your muscles is completely stretched, that are under tension, obviously, the tendons are under tension, the connective tissue, the joints are all under tension, but you learn um, how to control that. You'll learn how to make your muscles stronger in the stretch position under tension. It takes a while to get used to it. But I've been injury free ever since I've been incorporating a particular stretch exercise every single workout, every single workout, guys. There's many different exercises. I'll list them here on the screen so you guys can give it an indication of which exercise, which for particular body parts you can incorporate into your own training program. I do these every workout, right, for the particular body parts. And well, knock on. MDF, it's not wood, it's probably MDF. Knock on MDF that uh, I remain injury free because I haven't had an injury for five, six, maybe even eight years. Last time I had an injury was when I uh, partially tore my hamstring. Uh, that was an anadrol. Um, yeah, so I blame the anadrol and not my uh, <laughs> range of motion. And then a few more remarks when it comes to training. Perfect. Your form. Don't jump up in weight unnecessarily, right? Follow progressive overloads, slowly build up the weight so your connective tissue can keep up with the strength gain regarding your muscle mass, right? Your skeletal muscle can get a lot stronger, a lot faster than your connective tissue. So slowly build that up. You don't need to go from 30 to 40 to 60 to 100 kilos overnight. You can just slowly build it up and allow your connective tissue to keep up with the strength gain of your skeletal muscle. Perfect your form, right? Slow negative, explosive positive in the exercises that don't feel, uh, that don't compromise your muscle. Build up your weight steadily and slowly by following progressive overload. Use the lifting gear when required. Again, right? there's some lifting gear that actually might compromise your uh, connective tissue a little bit, right? And especially if you're using wraps or elbow sleeves or all this stuff, if you use that all the time, your connective tissue will never be able to grow. So, or at least adapt and get stronger. So I would only use those in cases when it's required, when you're doing very, very heavy weight and you need a little bit additional support around your connective tissue. You're not going to be wearing the sleeves, the wraps, 
the belts 24 seven, right? Only use them when required. And then if you do tweak something and something feels off, just go home, right? You had a minor injury. You walked away with a little bit of a scare, but nothing serious. Just go home, call it a day, clock out, go home, reassess and live to fight another day. I've had these little tweaks, micro injuries happen to me many, many times, right? When I'm pushing the boundaries on weight or sometimes you're a little bit off, you're a little bit tired and your head is not completely into a particular exercise and you tweak something, whether that's a tendon, a ligament or a little bit of a muscle or you just, your, your spine is a little bit misaligned. It feels off, you go home. It's that simple. You don't keep pushing through. Give yourself 24 hours to assess what happened, right? Because sometimes the black and blue, the bruising uh, takes a while to set in. Assess the damage. See how much pain you get over the course of 24 hours. Don't keep training because when you're training, you're always a little bit hyped up, right? You might take a little bit of pre-workout. You're really in the zone. Maybe you're on um, some uh, strong androgens pre-workout, right? That really uh, puts you in the zone to train insane. And then you had a little bit of a micro injury, a scare, uh, maybe a compromised uh, tendon. You do another set and that set one rep, you're one rep away from tearing your whole body apart. Really, one rep away. So please, if something happens in the gym or, or right, you, f you fall somewhere outside of the gym, you have a little bit of a pain, give yourself 24 hours to assess what happened, see if there's any uh, black and blue or bruising, or inflammation or, or a pain that keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse to the point you feel like going to the hospital. Don't be stubborn. Don't finish your workout. This is the perfect excuse and, and one of the few excuses you have that is legitimate for you to call it quits, go home and just uh, see what happens. All right. And then you can always go back the next day to train that body part again if you feel that it's uh, it was just a fluke. So, right, it's okay to just chill reassess at home. That pretty much covers it for the training aspect of this video. Again, everybody can incorporate the mobility, the deep tissue massage therapy or other therapy methods and some sort of stress exercise um, into their program. And it really helps to keep all the connective tissue pliable, um, oxygenated, proper blood flow and prevent injury um, as long as you're actively on top of the mobility the massage and the stretch exercises. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. Follow me on Instagram at vigorsteve. Look for my link tree. I got a ton of links there to the subreddit, to the Podbean, to the Spotify, where you can find all of these uh, videos in audio format. So you can save a little bit of bandwidth for yourself. A link to Vigor Steve, where all of the uh, vigorsteve.com, where all the articles are posted. Really do yourself a favor if you have a question and in most cases you don't get a reply in the comment section because there's too many comments and I'm a little bit too busy to answer everybody. In a lot of cases, there's an article for it, guys. Really, just go to vigorsteve.com. There's a search function there. Type in a keyword and you'll probably get presented with an article which will answer most of your questions. And you can also find links for my discount codes for Gorilla Mind, Young LA, Jim Pin, iHerb, all of my affiliates, everything that I'm associated with, you can all find it in the link tree down below in the description section or in the bio of my Instagram. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'll leave it at that. Frontable bicep for the vigorous crew. You guys already did what you're supposed to do. Much appreciated. See you guys in the next video.